Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I am a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. The journey continues today on July 14th, 2022 at approximately 622 a.m. PST. Well, you know, it really, things change a lot. Now, before I get started in this, if you like the video, do give us a thumbs up, and please do do subscribe to the channel. There's a lot of information to cover, and it really is way past due I started doing it. Now, and for that matter, it's way past time you took control of your own life. And that's what this really boils down to. Okay. Now, I return to this world, to this lifetime, for one primary purpose, and that is to remind people that working together, we can make this a better world for virtually everybody. The kicker to it is, you have to take responsibility for your actions, just as I have to take responsibility for mine. Okay, we have spent so much time focusing on, on two major factors. We've been taught over the last several centuries, quite literally, to fear everything. And recently, in the last 50 years, to go after immediate, you know, your immediate gratification. This has backfired miserably. Now, I fell into the same trap you did. I started looking at the big companies going, oh, they know what they're doing. No, quite frankly, they don't. Okay. They rely on the whole. Now, there are some companies out there that are really good. Okay. They're absolutely bang on. In, 50, in 40 years in, in Kelowna, where I am, I've run into four that I would absolutely recommend to anybody I run across. They're not absolutely perfect, but what they do do, that sounds bad. Um, what they do accomplish is they say, this is what I'm going to do. Here's the bill it's going to be. You know, this is what it's going to cost you. And they back it up with action. Okay. Now, I wrote a poem years ago called Words and Emotions. Okay, and it really boiled down to this, uh, and what it boiled down to was that words simply, they are simply labels for what we're doing, but they're absolutely useless if you don't actually do something with it. And come to think of it, I should probably repost that one. But what I've come to the understanding of is this, and it's a very big caution for you. If you don't know what you're aiming at, okay, I've run into this recently, and I'm dealing with it tomorrow, because that's when I'll be on the phone. Okay, I went to, I turned to a, into a, I turned to a website developer. Now, the number of questions that they asked, I was told it was a five to ten minute survey to get things started. Well, guess what? That five to ten minute survey took me an hour and a half. Now, I'm slow with technology. Okay, so it took me an hour and a half to fill it out, but they were asking questions that, frankly, they should have the answers to. Now, I'm not going to go into that, into exactly how that works. I will get all that straightened out with them tomorrow. Okay, because I'm in the middle of getting a website built. Well, in all fairness, I shouldn't say I'm getting it built. Okay, I should say I've just set it in motion. Now, the reality is that there's a lot of things I don't know. I know I'm going to upset some people. Okay, but the reality is when I'm dealing with that, I have come to the understanding that, you know, friends are a great thing, and I recommend you find as many as you can get, as you can draw. Okay. You know, if, if friends, acquaintances, call them what you will. Okay, but where it comes to business, you have to know exactly what you're aiming for. Okay, take a look at what you're doing. Now, I've learned a staggering amount in the last couple of months. But primarily what I've learned is trusting companies to do what they say is absolutely not going to work. If you are not right on the ball yourself, you're going to run into snags in all likelihood. Now, there are a couple of topics that I have absolutely avoided. Okay. Okay. And I'm still going to avoid them on YouTube. I've got to be careful because apparently 
from what I've seen, you know, and we can talk about whatever you will, you know, you can, you can talk about censorship or what have you. You know, when you take a company like YouTube or like Facebook, I hear, I hear whining and complaining about it. I wanted to do this and they cut me off. Well, guess what? Check the policies. Check the way the company runs. They're the ones that set the policies up. Okay. Now, will I continue using Facebook and, and, and the various different, you know, Facebook, YouTube, this sort of thing? You bet your bottom dollar I will. They're not perfect. Let's face it, they're run by humans. How perfect, how perfect are they likely to be? Don't get me wrong. I have yet to find a perfect race, period. Okay. But the website I'm building and that I'm working on is designed to handle, is going to be designed primarily to handle the writing I'm doing. Okay. And I am absolutely, as a matter of fact, I'm thinking that might not be a bad idea. And I'd love to hear your comments on this in the comments below or drop me a line. I have some major, major concerns with the way that religion is is promoting itself okay, in a lot of ways. And I'm thinking the safest way to get that information out is likely in a booklet form. Okay, now, the neat part about it is this. This little booklet here, that's all there is to it. Okay. That's believe in yourself and follow your dreams. That is literally the backbone to how I how I shifted my life around. Okay. Now, I'm thinking, you know, fr frankly, two of the books that I'm looking at, this one here is believe in your business and follow your dreams. But I'm thinking that the two of the books that are in this series, that are going to be in this series, are believe in your religion and follow your dreams, and believe in your spirituality and follow your dreams. And rest assured, the two are not the same thing. Okay. Now, I'm almost tempted to, to, I'm almost tempted to write one to the effect of believe in your orientation and follow your dreams. But, frankly, that's an interesting, I don't know if I'll get to that one. I gotta take a look at the titles I've got and get them dealt with. But, rest assured, the reason I'm, I'm playing around with that idea is I'm sitting here and I'm looking at the fact that, that the spiritual guides, the religions, the covens, the, you know, the different communities, society is absolutely fracturing at a staggering level. Okay, now if you desire the world to go to collapse, if you desire civilization to collapse, Man, stay on the path you're on. You're bang on the money for it. You're absolutely on the right road. Okay, this idea of, I don't like the way you think, therefore I'm going to shoot you, doesn't work. It never has. Okay, you look back through history, and war has never brought peace. It brings quiet. Okay, religion has not brought understanding. It has not brought a sense of enlightenment. It has not brought a sense of belonging. If it had, we wouldn't have 45,000 approximately different denominations in the Christian society alone. Okay. And, you know, the different, the different communities are going, oh, this community needs to, be, needs to be recognized. Guys, you're doing it backwards. It's that simple. Okay. Let's face it. When we take a look at it, you don't identify as one thing, that's your choice. You want to call somebody else, you want to call whatever your higher power is, whatever you choose. Knock yourself out. It's about how you treat people. Now, I only follow three karmic laws. I only follow three laws, and they're the karmic ones. Now, compare these three laws to the ones that you personally follow, whatever they are. Whether they're religious, social, parental legal, doesn't matter, okay, Between, you compare those to these three, and what I do believe you'll find is that in every one of them, okay, you'll find every one of your laws fit inside the three I follow. Be true to yourself first. Do unto others as you desire them to do unto you, 
energy out, energy in. Now, these three laws are equally important, just like the three legs in a three-legged stool. They all have to have, have stable emphasis, and they've all got to be kept in balance, or it will fall over. Now, right now, what mankind seems to be doing is going, let's see how fast I can absolutely decimate the unity and the communication lines between people. Let's see if I can find a stupid way, and I call it stupid because you know better. Okay, years ago, I worked for I worked for a company, and I still work for a company, but I was working in the hospitality industry, and I watched a young brunette, okay, young dark-haired woman, okay, they were both Caucasian, and I have to be an assistant manager at the time, and I saw her, I saw her drop garbage on the on the driveway, so I stepped out and I said, "Look, would you please pick that garbage up?" Now, she had a friend, the garbage you just dropped, right? She had a friend that was across the parking lot for me. I says, and would you please tell uh, tell your blonde friend to also pick up her garbage? Well, the brunette turned around, she looks at me, and she goes, you're being racist. I looked at her, and I says, how am I being racist? You called her blonde. Okay, well, you tell me what color her hair was and get her to pick up her garbage, if you would, please. Now, this is how stupid people have gotten. Okay, and I will use that term quite readily. And do understand, ignorance for me is a true ignorance. For whatever reason, you don't know any better. You haven't picked up the message. Okay, stupidity is when you know better and you do it anyway. Now, society has gotten stupider by the minute. And I do mean that quite literally. Okay, a decade ago, Using whatever method they use, the average IQ of, of people in the Western world was listed as uh, as the average being 100 to 120. Using the same methods, about six, about six months ago now, I think, they came out with a new record, with a, with a, new, with a new level. The average IQ right now has dropped a staggering point to 85. Okay, now when the IQ was 100, people were considered slow if they were under 80. Okay, I don't know what you want to call it now, but I will tell you this. The amount of people that are calling things, you know, you go into the different religions and you watch the number of wars in, a, in society where religion promotes peace and love. Yeah, sure it does. This is why everybody's killing each other and fighting with each other over religion. Okay, the, the, the lesbian gay community, that entire acronym, sure, that's a sense of community. That's why you keep breaking it into smaller and smaller parts. Okay, this is just idiocy. Okay, and it's getting worse. Now, you can stay on that path. You're more than welcome to it. Okay, myself, I look at all of you in exactly the same light. I do not care one way or the other, you know, whether or not you're rich, you're poor, you're black, white, blonde, green haired, it doesn't matter to me. Okay, I take a look at people that have tattoos. Okay, and I look at them and go, you know, if they've done a good job, it's like, gee, that's nice artwork. I wouldn't do it for myself. Okay, I certainly won't get a tattoo for me. But that's for me. Okay, I've also, I also told both my boys that, frankly, I will not support their idea. I will not say, I will not back them up on, on an idea of getting a tattoo or a piercing before they're 18. Okay, now the reason for that, and call it an arbitrary number, but the reason is, They've got to understand, I want to make sure that they've had time to really do the research. I like what one person said. I found out it was talking to somebody about tattoos. And their parents looked at them and went, Okay, get a picture of the tattoo you desire. And I absolutely think this is a brilliant idea. Get a picture of a tattoo that, you, that you're thinking of getting. Get it drawn up properly and put it on your mirror. And leave it there for a year. And you keep looking at it every day for a year. Right. 
if you if after a year you still like the look of it, absolutely go and do it. But understand, you're making a choice that is going to affect you for the rest of your life. It's not like once you get a tattoo, you can cut the arm off. Well, you could. It's not a brilliant idea, but it could be done. Okay, but we're talking about this idea that, you know, society is pulling itself apart now. I've had, I've had my company, okay, I've had Inner Voice Enterprises for 2007, so 15 years. I've done jack with it. Okay, I really have. I put out a lot of money. I've done absolutely jack, but I haven't been pushing the issue. Okay, and the reason for that, or the excuse for that, is a better way of putting it, is I've had a stable job. Okay, I've had a stable job. I could sit on my backside and just let it happen. But about five years ago, I came up with this idea. Now, I don't have a lot of money, and I will tell you this. I am so tired of people talking to me and going, you know, I got asked the other day by somebody, right, they say they contacted me on Messenger, and every time they do this, they do the exact same thing, and I'm sick of it. Okay. They asked, you know, if I had time to talk, and, you know, they asked why, how I was doing, I'm like, I'm busy. Well, let's face it. I'm writing 31 books at the same time. Okay. So am I busy? You bet. I'm also raising a 17-year-old. Okay. Or more to the point at this point, educating and guiding him. Okay. So here's, here's the real kicker to it. I get people calling this, you know, I get people contacting me, and it's not just from one. Right. It's like I meet somebody once. And they go, can I, you know, can, can I borrow some money off you? The answer is categorically no. Okay. Do I, do I agree with charity? You bet. But I do it on my own terms, helping the people I can. I don't have a lot of money. And I am so tired of people thinking that, oh, I speak nice to him. You know, there's a song out by Hilary Duff. And I don't know the name of the song. But it starts off with people People say they know me, but they don't know me. You know, they know my name, and that's where it ends. Okay, now I've done my best to keep things on an even keel. And trust me, that's been a challenge. But here's the thing, okay. People say, well, you know, you won't talk to me, why not? Inside the first paragraph of conversation, I get asked for money. It's not going to happen. I've quit answering phones that I that come in. Where I get where I get unknown number, okay, because I get so many people scamming me. There are so many geniuses out there that are going, gee, you know, here here's a deal to make money. Yeah, it probably is, but how many people do you have to rip off to do it? Now, I call it a scam. You know, people call that a scam. I also look at the at the major moguls that are going. Here's what we're going to do. Okay, I know of one company in particular where I paid for I paid for extended warranty for for an item. The the company I bought the item through wouldn't honor their their extended warranty. Now with that in mind, to me that's a scam. Okay. I'm telling you I'm giving you something and I'm not producing. Okay, the company that built the item I turned to them for their manufacturer's warranty that they make such a big hype over. They wouldn't honor it. Again, now this is a major mogul, okay, and they're pulling a scam. If a company is telling you, this is what I'm going to do, and they refuse to do it, okay, you know, and before any, there's somebody out there that I know has approached me about something that, that, that I agreed to, and I will still do it. Problem is, I'm missing the piece of information that I require. And so once I find it again, I will honor the contract. But unfortunately, we're talking about a contract that both and both the individual in question and myself entirely forgot about. Okay, and it's been over a decade now. Will I still honor the contract when again when I find the item again? The answer is absolutely yes, I will. Okay. 
the one thing I've always told people is the one is that I will not lie to you to make you feel better. Okay. I've got a company I've got a call today. And we're going to start off on a really sour note in their eyes. Because the reality is, I'm going to end up calling them up and going, okay, how about if we don't go with the idea of it's my fault you screwed up? Okay. How about if we start there? Because there is no way on the planet I'm responsible for their screw up. Okay. Basically, I fell into the trap of believing that as a major corporation that has been around for a long time, that they were actually going to do that. Now, I've mentioned to people, you know, I, like I've told you, and if you're running a company, absolutely, if you don't have one already, okay, and let's just get that on my list here. I've got a whole pile of things I've been working on. Absolutely, if you haven't already got one. Now, I call it a policy book. You may call it operations and procedures. If you don't have one, and I don't care, it doesn't matter how big a company you are or how small a company. It doesn't matter if you're a one-man one operation or you're a you know, several thousand employee operation. The policy book is important. Okay, and what it contains is when you're looking at a policy, how do you handle a situation? Okay, you start off with three three aspects to every policy. What is the policy? Okay, whatever it is. Okay, then I, and you let you specify what the policy is, and then you turn around and you go, okay, now here's the date. Here's today's date. Here's the policy I decided on. Description. What is the policy? Like, what's the policy? And the third section, why did I make this policy? You put that in a binder, okay? Or if you can do it on a clipboard, great. I'm thinking most companies require policies, but here's the, here's the reason for putting it into a binder. When you hire somebody new, okay, you hand them the binder and go, here's the policy book. This is what you're following. If you don't follow this, here's the outcome. And again, that would have to be one of the policies. Okay. You get them to, to get them to read it, and you have a sheet of paper that, and that you get them to sign that says, I read the book. You know, I read the policies. I understand the policies. Okay. And absolutely get them to do it. Okay. That's the one side of it. For you personally, the policy book is so that every four to six months, okay, actually every three to six, with most corporations, you usually do a quarterly assessment. So let's keep it that way. Corporations are massive organizations usually. Okay. And, you know, I've got my own view on whether or not to incorporate, whether or not to, to do it that way. I'm a firm believer if you run your company properly, then frankly, you can bypass a lot of the complications. My biggest objection, and it might be a misunderstanding in my part, okay, but my understanding is when you have a, when you've got a corporation, you have to have a board of directors. Now, I've heard of horror stories where uh, somebody comes up with an idea, decides to incorporate, and I don't understand all the legal ramifications of it, but they decide to incorporate and they put a board of directors in place, and then that board gets a brilliant idea and fires the owner. Now, if that is in fact the way it works, and I would love to for somebody to actually explain it to me in a proper way, and I don't mean send me a bunch of articles, read this, read, the reading it is pointless to me, okay? Because there is so much legal jargon and basically from a military standpoint, it would be called chaff, okay? They get thrown up in the air, but if that's the case where a board of directors actually has the capacity to fire the owner, then the board of directors is totally useless. Now, a board of advisors, on the other hand, is brilliant. And that is something I will end up developing at some point. Because, you know, I'm 15 years in, well, August 15th, 
Right. August 15th of this year. Okay. Actually, I think it might be August 11th. I wrote it down somewhere, so I'll find that. But in any event, of 2007, okay, I opened the doors to my business and did absolutely jack. Well, here's the funny thing. Most kids, if you take a look at a child, most of them have no clue where they're heading. It's not until they start deciding they're going to do something and make their own way. They usually hit close to the mid-teens by the time they do that. Funny thing there. My company is doing just that. And now it's a case to it is a case to stand up and decide this is where I'm heading. And you yourself have the same issue. You've got a company, and that company may be a sole proprietorship. It may be a one person option. Uh, okay, operation. But it is time to take control of it. It's time to look at the way your life is going and go, am I happy with it? Okay. Now, with that, in, with that in mind, okay, we are all in exactly the same boat. Wherever your life, however it got to where it is, whether we're talking business or we're talking a home front, whatever the business, whatever the situation, you are here, right here, right now. Every single one of you, and I can't think of an, of a, of an exception at this point, every single one of you is going to die. And you're not taking your physical stuff with you. Okay. It is time to quit, to quit finding ways to separate yourself from other people. Yeah, I'm very much a recluse. Okay, and really I'm breaking away from that. I will go out in public. I just don't go very far because I get lost way too easy. But where and what we have to do is stop finding stupid ways to say that, you know, I'm different or I'm not the same as you are. Every one of you is absolutely unique. You all see the world in your own way. Absolutely you do. Okay. But until you get it through your head, that just because you identify with certain things. I mean, I like ice cream. Okay. Am I supposed to start telling people I identify as ice cream? Brilliant idea. Unfortunately, this just tells you the level of stupidity that people are using to find different ways to make themselves different. You're all unique. Get over it. You're not the same, but you are all going to die. And none of you are taking your stuff with you. At least not that I've ever run into. And I do mean ever. Now, with that in mind, okay, I've got a whole pile of things to do. But again, I'd love to hear your comments in the comments below, or if you'd like to send me a, an individual message on any topic. Okay, it doesn't matter to me. I will give you as honest an answer as I'm able to. Okay, or maybe I should say as accurate an answer as I'm able to. In any event, drop me a line if you'd like. There's a whole list of different ways of getting in touch with me below this video. There's a whole list of different publications I've already got in print. Okay, that can be ordered directly through me. I do use PayPal as far as as far as purchasing goes. Now, with that in mind, I've got a bunch of things to do, so I'm going to leave you with it, and I will be back again. Yeah, I'll be back again tomorrow. But until then, take care of yourselves and each other, and for pity's sakes, stay positive.